Does the number 23 in the Bible point to a 2023 rapture? Is it just a coincidence or a gem revealed in its time? Let's find out today on Rapture Recce. Before I start this video, I would like to thank Super James Earl on YouTube, who revealed the verse 23 gem in 2020, pointing to a possible 2023 rapture date. Since then, I uncovered a lot of verses 23s, chapter 23s, and chapter 2 and 3s in the scripture that portray a rapture scenario that points to either the redemption of our bodies, an escape from danger, our judgment at the seat of Christ, and our reunification in Christ Jesus. As we discuss these hidden gems, I would like you to pay close attention to how precise and divine this revelation is. So sit tight, relax, and watch. And at the end of this video, I would like you to draw a conclusion as to whether all these gems are just a coincidence, prophecy, or a hidden gem revealed in its perfect time. As we see all the signs, Jesus told us converging in speed and intensity. Numbers in the Bible are not merely numerical figures, but rather they hold a profound significance that stretches beyond mere arithmetic. They serve as keys that unlock hidden truths, unveiling divine patterns, and provides us with glimpses of a greater narrative at work. From the very beginning, numbers are interwoven into the fabric of creation itself. The scriptures tell us that God meticulously structured the cosmos in six days, resting on the seventh, a pattern that established the sacred rhythm of work and rest. As we journey through the pages, chapters and verses in the Bible, numbers continue to appear as markers of divine intervention, guiding lights in times of uncertainty and reflections of God's sovereign plan. But it's not just the individual numbers themselves that captivate our attention. It's the consistency and interconnectedness with which they reappear that truly astonishes us. As we unpack the layers of meaning behind this number and the events it touches, we will witness how God's hand orchestrates a symphony of grace, revealing His character and inviting us to participate in His story. So, let us embark on this journey of discovery, allowing the numbers in the Bible to unveil a mosaic of divine wisdom and purpose that stretches from Genesis to Revelation. If you do not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, i.e., the biblical rapture these gems and jewels will unfortunately mean nothing to you. But nevertheless, stick around. The Order of Resurrection The Book of Corinthians spells out substantial details of the first resurrection more than any other book in the Bible. In the book 1 Corinthians 15, we read, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in turn. Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. In verse 23, Paul tells us the order in which each believer will be made alive in turns, Christ being the first fruits of all believers who are alive and asleep to this present day represents the first group of people who will be made alive during the rapture and the latter representing all those who will be made alive at the second coming of Christ, preceding the thousand-year reign of our King. At the rapture, in verse 23, all the first fruits being believers who died in Christ and are alive to this present day will be redeemed from the earth and caught up into the clouds with Jesus and we shall be with him forever. One will ask, who is the first fruits? The first fruits. In Romans 8.23 we read, Then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. 
And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the scripture we just read, in verse 23, Paul makes mention of believers being the first fruits of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, groaning inwardly for the redemption of our bodies and the revealing of Jesus Christ. At the rapture, Jesus Christ will be revealed to all those who are groaning inwardly for his appearance and will have their bodies redeemed from this sinful world and they will be set apart from sin forever. One little piece to add to this gem is that just before verse 23, Paul makes mention of the pains of childbirth right from his time to our present times in verse 22. We as Christians believe the tribulation has not yet started, but we are just merely in birth pains which progressively lead to the rapture of the body of Christ and the snatching of the man-child in Revelation 12. Oh, how interesting can this be? Just a coincidence? Revelation 12, man-child caught up. We believe the man-child to be Jesus, Christ himself, and since we are the body of Christ, we are joint heirs with him and therefore partake in this blessing of being caught up to heaven from the fowler's snare. To justify this interpretation, the man-child representing Jesus Christ and the church surprisingly appears in the verse 23s of Matthew and Ephesians, respectively. Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In verse 23, we see the man-child born, just as the man-child will be born in Revelation 12. Coincidence, in the book Ephesians 5, verse 23, we read, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. In verse 23, the church is defined as the body of Christ. At the rapture, we will be transformed in the likeness of Christ, and He will be Lord over us forever and ever. The riches of God's glory revealed. In Romans 9, 22-25, we read, What if God, although choosing to show His wrath and make His power known, bore with great patience the objects of His wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory, even us, whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles? As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one, who is not my loved one. In verse 23, we see the riches of God's glory being revealed to his vessels of mercy, i.e. his people, both Gentiles and Jews. At the 2023 rapture, hopefully, both Gentiles and Jews in Christ will be caught up to God's throne and the riches of his glory will be made manifest. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9, we read, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. If we read further down, after verse 23, Paul continues to talk about a remnant of Jews being restored and saved. 
As we all know, the restoration of Israel commences right after the church is taken to heaven. Meeting God, the Father face to face. John 16, verse 23, Jesus tells us that on that day we will not need to ask him for anything, but rather we would be able to ask from God the Father himself through him, and whatever we ask his Father, it shall be given to us. This is exactly what all believers will be able to do only in heaven after the rapture. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Lifted into the heavens, in Matthew 11, Jesus warns about the impending judgment coming on all those who experienced and had seen the signs and miracles he performed, but yet did not believe. In Matthew 11:23, we read, And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. In verse 23, Jesus talks about Capernaum not being lifted to the heavens? Is this just a coincidence or a gem revealed in its time? Worshipping God in spirit and in truth. John 4 verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. At the rapture, we will be given our spiritual bodies of flesh and bones and shall worship God as he is. Saving others out from the fire. In Jude 1 verse 23, we read, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The Bible tells us to pray, to be accounted worthy to escape and be presented blameless before Christ as his coming. Surprisingly, in Jude verse 23, it says, snatching others out from fire, hating the sin flesh. At the rapture, despite our sin nature, through Christ's sanctification and justification, we will be glorified in him apart from sin and will be made sinless. Be merciful to those who doubt. 23, save others by snatching them from the fire. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. In Genesis 1 verse 23, Eve is created out of Adam. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Jesus being the second Adam tells us in his word that we will be likened unto him when he appears a second time to receive us unto himself. Ephesians 5.30 tells us that just as through the deep sleep and awakening of Adam, Eve was made flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones. And so we also, through the death and resurrection of Christ, will be made flesh of his flesh and bones of his bones. 1 John 2 and 3. At the rapture, believers will be transfigured from this earthly mortal tent into their heavenly tent and we will be glorified in immortality and Christ's brilliance just as he is. Philippians 3, 20, 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. The Mystery of the Rapture In 1 Thessalonians 5, the profound mystery of the rapture is revealed by Paul, and surprisingly in verse 23, it reads, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ.
The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. The Lord keeps repeating that we must be kept blameless or accounted worthy on the day of the rapture, and coincidentally does so in verse 23, both in Thessalonians and Jude. This is not a coincidence, believers in Christ Jesus. This is something to ponder on. If there's any sin that is hindering your walk with God, repent and reconcile with Christ. For he who called us through faith will be the same one to preserve us and give us power over the sin that easily entangles our walk with him. O oh Lord, wilt thou judge the righteous and the wicked together? In the book of Genesis, we heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and how God judged the wicked for their iniquities and saved Lot, the righteous man. In Genesis 18.23 we read, 22. The angels turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. 23. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Surprisingly in verse 23, Abraham asks God if the judgment given to the wicked will be the same judgment given to the righteous. And God spake unto him, Even if there are five righteous persons, I will spare the land. In this scenario, we see that God cannot judge the wicked with the righteous. The righteous are set apart from the wicked before judgment proceeds from the throne of the Almighty. In this case, verse 23 being 2023, the righteous will be raptured from the judgment that's about to take the world by surprise. Lot's Escape After Abraham's conversation with God, the Lord sent the angels to rescue Lot from Sodom before the judgment due was released, and surprisingly in verse 23, Lot escaped the judgment that was poured out on Sodom and Gomorrah through the grace and mercy of our Almighty God. In Genesis 19.23 we read, 23 By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Dear Christian, are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready? In the book of Daniel, we read that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den for despising the custom set by King Darius, and surprisingly was rescued out in verse 23. Beloved, this is no coincidence. Daniel 6.23, we read 23. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.20-22 Beloved, this brings us to the end of part 1 of this verse 23 series. In the next video, if we are still here, we will talk about Enoch's rapture in this 23 Genesis 5, Leah and Laban, Lee given to Jacob in verse 23, Rehab the prostitute rescue from destruction, and many more. If you found this video insightful, like this video and share this video with all believers in Christ, so that they may know that the Lord our God is great and he has unsealed this gem just at the perfect time. May the Lord account you worthy on his return. Maranatha.